What's up YouTube? This is James Q. Quick from Learn, Build, Teach, and today I want to tell you all about getting started with Netlify, so let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so if you guys pay any attention to the web development community, whether you follow people on Twitter or you listen to podcasts, Syntax is one that I listen to. You can find it at syntax.fm with Wes Boss and Scott Talinsky. They rave about Netlify. People I meet in the community rave about Netlify. People I meet at hackathons rave about Netlify. Basically, Netlify is becoming one of the hottest names in hosting for web development. So on their front page here, you can see they kind of uh, use the mantra, build, deploy, and manage modern web projects. And really what they're focused on is static website hosting. And they do this really well with uh, their CDN so they can replicate your files all over the world, make them really fast and quick and easy to get to. And then uh, the static website uh, development gives you uh, really good security, really good development workflow, really good speed as well. So. I, I guess I'll tell you guys a little quick story for me. I qu first used Netlify at a hackathon about a month or two ago because someone was telling me how amazing it was and I kid you not, I was signed up for an account and had my first project deployed and live within uh, five minutes. So that was pretty amazing. And that was one of the big reasons that I wanted to continue working with it and now share these videos with you. <laughs> so uh, the first big feature uh, with the hosting in Netlify is continuous deployment. And uh, continuous deployment is something that other hosts do as well. And Netlify does it really well and then also adds some cool features on top of that. So what continuous deployment means is that I can connect my website to a centralized repository in GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket. So after I've connected my website to my repository, anytime I push code to that repository, Git, or excuse me, Netlify is gonna pull that code and go ahead and redeploy my website. So when it actually triggers the deploy process, it's gonna execute a command that I tell it to do, which uh, probably for most of you guys with static sites is gonna be a build command of some sort. And then uh, we just basically tell Netlify where to serve our static assets from, which in most cases is gonna be a public directory. So anytime I check in code to, uh, to my master branch, for example, in GitHub, Netlify will pull that code and automatically go ahead and deploy that. And it's super, super awesome. Now, I wanna take a second to talk about pricing here because the free tier is absolutely incredible. So you get, uh, you get one user, if you're doing multi-user things, you'll have to upgrade to a paid, uh, paid subscription. Uh, but you get all the features of continuous deployment that I'll talk about a little bit more in a second, as well as custom domain names and HTTPS security certificates for your site. So this custom domain part really sticks out to me because in a lot of other hosting providers that I've used, they provide a free tier, but to use a custom domain, you have to upgrade to a paid tier. So this is one that's pretty unique for me in Netlify is that it allows you to use that custom domain without paying any money. Now, fun fact, you can also buy custom domains through Netlify. So you don't have to pay to use your domain, but you still have to pay to, uh, to buy one from some domain provider. You can actually buy that within Netlify now and buy your domain and use your domain all within the same platform, which is pretty cool. And then the HTTPS here, uh, Netlify takes care of it all for you. You just tell it to go ahead and do HTTPS and it does all the configurations and certificates and you don't really have to worry about it after that, which is super cool. So I am personally using the free tier. I'm relatively new with Netlify, but I'm doing a few different things, uh, trying them out or working on my Learn, Build, Teach website, which should be open in the next week or so. Uh, so I've tried out a couple of different features. Nothing that I am doing is getting anywhere near needing to get out of the free tier. But you guys will have to obviously, if you're doing something pretty serious or you need multiple users or collaborators or whatever it is, you can uh, look at these different paid tiers. So a couple of additional features in uh, continuous deployment that I think are pretty cool is one, um, deployments are atomic. And what atomic means is once you start kind of trying to do a deployment, if anything goes wrong, it backs out completely. So atomic means when you start to do something, you do the whole thing and either everything goes correctly and your site actually does get deployed or something went wrong and you back out and then there's no side effects from that kind of backing out process. So a uh, kind of goes alongside of that is the fact that there's zero downtime in your deployment. So basically what happens is you've got your website deployed, then when you push new changes, 
Netlify kind of deploys that to another probably container behind the scenes. It creates another container. It deploys your code there. Once that process is, is fully finished, keep in mind your existing web container is still out there. It basically just switches over your traffic from old to new. So never should a user come to your website and see your website be down. They will basically just refresh and they'll get the new site. So this is pretty cool. So uh, them being atomic and zero downtime are two pretty cool features here with Netlify that I think are important to understand. And uh, another one that you can do, let me actually come in and grab one of my sites here. I don't really have too much to hide from you guys. Under, um, under my domain settings, I think, actually let me go back to overview maybe. Deploys is what I was actually looking for. Uh, so you can see here a list of all the deploys. So every time I checked into my master branch, it went ahead and deployed a new version of my site. You can also select a previous version of your site and just do a rollback. So it gives you a really easy way to, if you mess something up and accidentally push to production or push to master, or you push something to master that you thought works and it turns out it doesn't, you, you can just select one of these previous deploys and go ahead and roll back. You can also click the stop auto publishing, which will basically disconnect your continuous deployment and it'll kind of freeze on whatever the latest deploy is. So let's say you want to, you're working in your source control, you set up auto, continuous deployment, then you're really happy with what you got and you don't want to take any risk of messing it up for a while. You can stop auto publishing and then reactivate it later on once you're ready to kind of get back in that workflow if you want to. So a couple of different options there. Now uh, in the docs, um, like most providers here, you have access to command line tools. You can get them from the Netlify CLI package on NPM. You can log into your Netlify account. You can create websites. You can connect an existing website uh, from your uh, source control to continuous deployment. So the same thing that I could do in the GUI in the website, you can do in the command line tools, which is pretty cool. And then also, if you don't like to do uh, deploys with continuous deployment, you can do manual ones as well. So if for some reason you don't want to trigger a deploy based off of a branch in your source code, for example, you can choose to do manual deploys and do that from your, uh, actually down here in this section, from the command line here with Netlify deploy. So pretty cool. Again, this is pretty standard. Heroku gives you similar tools. Uh, Azure gives you similar tools. Nothing too new here, but uh, just kind of consistent with all the, the rest of them. Now with uh, Netlify, they focus on uh, they focus on hosting static websites, and static websites really focus on the front end of your site, right? So there's a big decoupling between front end and back end with static sites. Uh, this means that when you're working on the front end of your site, the static site, you don't have a coupled node server to go along with. For example, uh, you might use Firebase for uh, data store or authentication or something like that. You might uh, have a database that you do store some things in, but you, don't, you may not have a direct way to get things into that database. So with, let me see if I can find it here. Actually, I'll just do a search for it. Functions. So with functions, uh, you basically have the ability in Netlify to create serverless functions, and serverless is kind of a misnomer. It doesn't mean there's not a server, it just means you, the developer, don't have to care about creating and maintaining a server. Netlify does all of that stuff for you. All you have to do is provide the code for your functions. So a function here is basically just a node endpoint that you can do whatever you want with. So you can call that, uh, you can use it just like an API, you can post data to it, and then have your, your function do whatever logic you need to happen behind the scenes. Now for me, in my Learn, Build, Teach website, I'm taking uh, I'm taking emails in my signup form and I'm sending them to a Lambda function that then actually sends them to my MailChimp account, which means I can store the API keys on the server, not on the client, and just kind of avoid some of that hassle. So with uh, Lambda functions, uh, and Lambda is just the AWS version of serverless functions, so those might get uh, used intermittently. So just kind of know serverless is generically what they're called. Lambda is AWS Lambda functions, which Netlify actually uses. So really important with the free tier, you get 125,000 requests per month and 100 uh, hours of runtime per month. This is incredible. I don't have anything on my website that's gonna use anywhere near this anytime soon. So uh, this is obviously gonna cover anything I need. If you guys have a super popular website that does a lot of things, you might go beyond that, I don't know. Uh, but for me, this is definitely gonna do what I need it to. 
So you guys can look through the docs here to see what actually setting up the code is. I've also got a video that you guys can check out on creating and deploying your first Lambda function if you're interested in actually going and doing that. So another thing on here that's kind of similar is forms. And this is the ability to kind of add a tag to an HTML form and have it automatically post to Netlify. Netlify will do some magic and then trigger a function that you define. So I think down here, I forget where it is, receiving submissions, uh, it's basically going to send the form submission to a function that you define and then handle what you want to do. So the only downside here is that forms uh, free includes up to 100 form submissions per month. So if you're doing a lot of form submissions, you could go directly to a Lambda function, which is what I do, instead of actually using forms. But pretty cool if you guys need uh, some sort of kind of backend thing to handle form submission, submissions specifically, kind of set it through that. Uh, you guys can check out forms in Netlify as well. So another cool thing that we have here with, uh, with Netlify, I need to see how to do it. So let's go to deploy settings, I think, and continuous deployment. And maybe I'll edit here, is you can set up uh, branch deploys or like preview deploys. And if you look, uh, my production branch is master. So anytime I push to master, that's going to rebuild my site and actually rebuild like the core, the main site. But you can also add additional branches here like develop or a feature branch or all of your branches and have them actually get deployed as well, but to a separate URL, a separate container. And this will actually allow you to deploy changes not affect your main core website, but give you a unique URL that you can pass out to friends and family or testers to be able to test out the website before actually going on the live. Uh, I gotta be careful with live. It's still a live site, it's just not your main site. So it gives you a separate URL that you can test with, you can play with, see if it looks right, and then when you're ready, you can merge that code into master and have it go, uh, go live to your real site, if that makes sense. So this is a great way to be able to test out some stuff before you actually go to your master branch and to your main site. Now, another thing that you can do, which is pretty cool, is split testing. And split testing allows you to choose a couple of different branches that you can split test between. So what split testing means is that, as you see here, I've got two different branches, master and develop, and I've set it up to where it's gonna split all of my traffic 50% to the master version of my site and 50% to the develop branch version of my site. This way I can do different features in different ones. I can do some analytics. I can, I can actually get access to which branch they're viewing in my code. And then based on those analytics, I could see which one has a better click through rate, which one has better sales rates, which one has a better user experience and so on and so on. So a lot of people that are coming out with new features or new changes in the UI, will uh, go ahead and split between uh, their master and a separate branch or maybe just two random branches, split that traffic and it's as easy as dragging these things around like this and that way they can track to see which one is working the best for them. So those are a lot of the really cool features with Netlify. This is again one of the hottest topics in, in hosting in web development. So it's definitely worth checking out if you guys are interested. I've got a couple of other videos on Netlify like deploying your first site and building and deploying your first Lambda function that you guys should check out. And keep an eye out for the learnbuildteach.com website to go live in the next week or so as well. So that's gonna do it for this video. Definitely give Netlify a shot. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you guys are working on. If you're using hosting with Netlify, if you're using other hosts, things that you like, things that you don't like. Love to hear from you guys. And until then, I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and you can check out my newsletter on learnbuildteach.com to get updates on the latest content as it comes out. Thanks for watching.